see certain friends or liking girls pictures and so that's um here's it no so it's like if if you are telling your so yeah okay we don't get into relationships to change people right so you want to get into a relationship and then say to your partner my boundary is you not hang out with your friends that's not your boundary that's a control your boundary is what what somebody can't do to you right that your boundary is like on my personhood when it comes to my stuff like my boundary is you can't touch my phone my boundary is you can't call me names my boundary is i don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who is not growth oriented my boundary is i don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other girls but when you're saying you're not allowed to see those friends, you're not allowed to like girls' pictures, that's not a boundary, that's controlling. So a boundary is yours. It's not something you impose. My boundary is something I impose on you. When you are imposing on somebody's decision-making factors, that's controlling. So there is a clear distinction between what is controlling behavior, I'm telling you what you have to do, and what a boundary is. I will not be in a relationship with somebody who does these behaviors. So if you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who has friends like that, then leave the relationship. If you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who likes girls' pictures, then leave the relationship. You have every right to have your boundary, but you do not have a right to try and control other people. Oh, I'm loving fix that shit so far. I'm about to leave the love of my life because I'm disrespected. I'm scared. I'm going to lose everything. What are you going to gain? What are you going to gain? Uh, isn't that all just semantics? It all means the same thing. No. No, I choose my environment. I have every right to choose my environment. I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. You're free to do what you want. My stupidity was getting into a relationship with somebody I didn't know. I got into a relationship and I didn't know what kind of friends you had. I got into a relationship and I didn't know what you were doing, how you are behaving. So that's, that's on me. That's on me. My mistake, and it looks like I might have to leave this relationship because we don't come into relationships to change people. So that's on me, but it's it's not semantics. I'm not I'm not showing up to control you. I'm showing up and this is what I want for myself. And if it turns out you're not what I want for myself, my bad. I need to exit this relationship and go find the person who suits me. Because I didn't use a no kissing for three months dating role and I got into a relationship with a stranger. I didn't wait until I met his people before I kissed him so that I could vet him not only through my friends by bringing him around my friends, but I could vet him through the people he surrounds himself with. That's my bad. I didn't do my homework before getting into a relationship. Yeah, wow, you're the only relationship coach who explains the difference between boundaries and control. Uh, meeting him for the fr I love you sure thank you meeting him for the first time on Friday any advice just grab a drink and go for a walk um, hot chocolate tea smoothie whatever and walk this is a much more um, this is a much more comfortable way of communicating than an interview so don't do the interview do the comfortable walk hi love love the lights added to your set thank you I just ended a four-year relationship. I don't know how to be happy by myself. I'm 21. First of all, Mother Nature didn't design you to be happy by yourself. Mother Nature designed you to be part of a tribe and to pair up. So, of course, if you're single and alone, you feel dissatisfied and unhappy. It is not coded into you to be satisfied and happy alone. We, we, you know that, that thing, strength in numbers, that's coded into our DNA. 
the desire to pair bond is coded into our DNA. The sense of safety that comes with the tribe is coded into our DNA. It's not your job to figure out how to be happy alone. It's not. It's your job to have a close circle tie. It's your job to have friends and people you surround yourself with and people you lean on and people who are part of your growth and part of your companionship. Um, but do grab No More Assholes, that baby right there. Grab that book, this one here. Read this and make sure when you go to find your next partner, you do so in an educated, empowered way. What if I need words of affirmation for comfort, but he doesn't like doing that? What does he do? How does he show you love? Don't ignore how he shows you love because you're holding out for this particular thing. Um, so there's that, right? Because we do that, we get tunnel vision. I want this. Everything else doesn't compute because I want this. And if you're not doing this, I'm not loved. You're not caring enough for me. If you're not doing this, fuck everything else you're doing. And what happens when you do that is you create what I call the downfall of the relationship through a domino effect of emotions, where he goes, it doesn't matter what I do, it's never enough, because he's showing you love in the way he understands how to show love. For my husband, it's acts of service. I'm a words of affirmation person too. I understand the struggle, because my husband doesn't do words of affirmation. He doesn't, it's, it's, it's counter in his brain. For him and his brain, words of affirmation is weak. You shouldn't need it. And so for him to use words of affirmation, it's like asking a fish to breathe outside of water. So I don't get words of affirmation from him. But what I don't do is discredit how he shows up for me, how he loves me. If you discredit how he loves you because you refuse to let other people fill up your love bank through words of affirmation, only this one person is going to make me feel love through my love language. Because listen, I let you guys fill my love bank up with words of affirmation. By the way, please go leave reviews on Amazon for the books that you've read. Um, because I live on those. I live on those. Um, if you refuse to allow your love bank to be filled with words of affirmation from other sources and you refuse to acknowledge how he shows love outside of words of affirmation, what's going to happen is he's going to say, it doesn't matter what I do, it's not good enough. That is frustration. Frustration will lead to helplessness. It doesn't matter what I do, it's never good enough. Helplessness leads to hopelessness. Why am I here? You don't want that domino effect to happen. Acknowledge how he loves you. Open yourself up to receiving love from other sources and you will fill your love bank. Translate his love language and you will fill your love bank. Increase your confidence and you will fill your love bank. Write down everything he says and does to prove to you that he loves you and is devoted to you. And you will be conscious of reality instead of spinning in your imagination that says, I'm not loved. What is the perfect date with you and your hubby? Uh, I mean, now all you can eat sushi at my favorite restaurant. How often do you think couples should spend time together when living apart? There's no formula for that. It all depends on availability, right? Work schedules, responsibilities. Um, all about making the minutes count when you don't have a lot of time to spend together. How do I build the relationship back up after discrediting how he loves me? You can grab Fix That Shit, my love. This is the book that is gonna help you deal with your emotions and recognize your partner for who you are and give you the scripts and dialogue for understanding how to reconnect and re-uplift your relationship. Left my, I love your advice, thank you. Left my boyfriend because he was a compulsive liar, manipulous, but my dad thinks I'm too picky. Your dad doesn't know, your dad doesn't know. So just ignore your dad really like literally ignore your dad and don't talk to him about your relationship what if i need words of affirmation yes and by the way when you need comfort 
Uh, if you if you need comfort, something happened and you need comfort, you know how you want this to be, right? Like I taught my husband to comfort me and I teach you guys how to how to teach your men because we do need to teach men what we need. Men need instructions when it comes to us. They really do. Um, and so with my husband, I'll say, baby, I had, a, I had a hard day. I just want to vent. I don't want any advice. I just want to get it out. And then I want you to put your arms on me and tell me everything is going to be okay. And then when I'm done talking, I say, okay, baby, now I need you to put your arms on me and tell me everything is going to be okay. And did you see how specific and guiding that was? And they are happy when you do that because they feel useful. They feel like they're helping you. And that's exactly how they want to feel when it comes to us. How long to wait before introducing friends? Uh, introduce friends before you kiss. Introduce friends before you kiss. How do I learn to speak my boyfriend's languages? Like love language? Um, do the quiz, right? Do the five love language quiz. Do your tips also work in the United States? My tips work all over the entire planet. So do the love language quiz. There is a link to that in the link tree in my bio. My partner likes his space when we have an argument, but it goes on for days. Is that normal? Sure it is, because people need to process their thoughts and emotions. So grab fix that shit, because what you're talking about is a symptom of the conflict in your relationship. If you remove the conflict, you remove the symptom. So grab fix that shit to eliminate the conflict in your relationship, and you won't have this symptom anymore. How can you be sure you actually love your partner instead of just enjoying being around them? You you strive for them, like you, you want to support them. You want to be a part of their growth. You want to have a life with them. You see yourself long-term with them. Guys, he wants a notification when I go live. Say, I do. Why three months? Is there a threshold at three months you surpass? So first of all, time-wise, it's not too long. So it's, it doesn't, it's, it's not unreasonable, right? I'm going to wait a year before I kiss you. I'm sorry. Like, like, we need to wait a year before we kiss. Well, a year seems like a really long time. Three months is a short period of time. You'll buy, you'll buy a plane ticket three months ahead of time, right? So three months is not such a long time that it seems unreasonable to people. It's also not too short that you don't have enough time to let consistency play out. Anybody can be great for a month. Anybody can be great maybe for two months. But if that's not who they really are, the facade does not last for an entire three months. Um, oh, it's not unreasonable to tell that to all the toxic men in your video comments. Those aren't men, those are guys. Those are guys. And we're not we're not we're not communicating with guys, right? We're letting guys show themselves and going, okay, you're a guy. Off you go to the side, clear the way, get out of my space. I'm leaving this for men. So those are the guys, right? And so for them, it's too long because they are selfish short-term thinkers. And that's the whole point. When you say three months, three months is too long for a selfish short-term thinker. Three months is not long for a generous long-term thinker. So it really helps clear the way by getting the guys to immediately display themselves because guys, they'll be like three months, that's insane. Nobody would wait three months. What, do you have issues? Oh man, that's a massive red flag right there. This vehement reaction to the no kissing for three months dating rule, this repulsion to that rule shows you who someone is, a selfish, short-term thinker who cares more about getting what they want when they want it than they do about who you are. And so when they show themselves, when you, when you present this rule, you go, okay, no more dates with you. 
because you're not the person that I want to get into a relationship with. I don't want a selfish person. I don't want somebody who can't think long term. I don't want somebody who only cares about themselves. I don't want somebody who doesn't give a shit about who I am. Uh, now, the honeymoon period, you've heard that term before, right? It's chemical high. The honeymoon period is a chemical high. This is created by Mother Nature in order to aid the procreation process. You don't have to kiss to feel that chemical high, that excitement that you feel between the next text, that excitement that you feel when you're going to see them. That's a chemical high. You didn't kiss yet, but you still feel it because Mother Nature wants you to procreate. If you add the kiss chemical to the chemical high, the kiss chemical is phenylethylamine. It's created when two lips come together because everybody's lip secretes a chemical that doesn't do anything to them till it comes in contact with another set of lips. That combination is phenylethylamine. It's an aphrodisiac, an amphetamine, antidepressant. If you introduce heroin to the chem, like basically like you're meeting somebody and you're like, okay, like I'm gonna get to know you. And then you shoot up some heroin. And then you go, you made me feel this way. You must be amazing because I feel amazing when I'm with you. You have misappropriated your feelings. This is false. You don't want to have false feelings. You don't want to think somebody's amazing before you know who they are. So the whole point of no kissing for three months is not creating a chemical high that shuts down the red flag alert and tells you something about that person that isn't actually true. My boyfriend didn't want to chill with me today because we're already going on a mini staycation on Sunday. Any advice on how to process this? I kind of got upset. So that sounds codependent, my love. Like I can't handle my boyfriend not wanting to spend every spare minute with me. It upsets me if he doesn't want to spend every spare minute with me. And so what you need to do is grab two books. You got to get fix that shit because you have to learn how to deal with your emotions. You have to learn how to be okay with space. You have to learn how to be a functional partner in a relationship, not somebody who's codependent. And you have to do something with your time. So custom made is going to teach you what your purpose and passion is if you don't already know what it is. And then it's going to teach you how to monetize it so that you are busy making money doing something that you love instead of upset that your partner isn't filling up all your time. Hi, Mama Queen. We've been together for 11 years with some hookups. How do I know if he's a generous long-term thinker? So no more assholes has the 12 character traits that you use to figure out if he's a selfish short-term thinker or a generous long-term thinker. My boyfriend has got me a gift for my birthday every year, but then this year, what does it mean? Did you ask him? I've moved on in a lot of ways. I've been with someone else for eight years when the custody battle. Oh, guys, don't give me puzzle pieces. You got to put it all in one box. If it's so complicated, you have to put it in multiple box. Do get a coaching session. Um, when we're talking about like how, how, how do I fix my problem, my particular problem instead of how do I understand a generality about human behavior? Um, that is something that you'll get a professional answer in a coaching session, not on a live, because on a live, I can't get the relevant information. That is something that you'll get a professional answer in a coaching session, not on a live, because on a live, I can't get the relevant information. So if it's that complicated, do get a coaching session. I was watching, I was watching The Perfect Storm. Was it yesterday or the day before? Uh, man, that movie's upsetting. Like, I was just so stressed out watching it. Uh, what advice would you give a girl in their early 20s? I would say read No More Assholes and Dating 101. If you're looking for a, uh, a committed long-term relationship and if you want fun, um, make sure you do it safely. Long-term boyfriend, no longer putting an effort to plan dates. Um, yeah, so what happens is 
uh, your relationship will shift and change, right? So the courtship stage will change into the reality stage. In the reality stage, what are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? You're supposed to come together as puzzle pieces. Are you a good planner? Then use your strengths to plan what you want. What are his strengths? Like you're, you're, you're like, he doesn't plan dates anymore. Okay. What are his strengths? What does he contribute? If you tunnel vision into this one thing and disregard what he does and get poopy about this, guess what? Those other things that he does are going to start dropping off. And do you know why? Because he's going to say, I do these things and I get a poopy attitude. Why should I do these things? It doesn't benefit the relationship. She's not happy. It doesn't matter what I do. She's not happy. So instead of being unhappy that this is a weakness, if this is your strength, plan the fucking dates and be grateful for those other things he does. Thank you, baby. I appreciate this. You're such a good man. You take such good care of me. And all these other things are going to continue and expand because he's like, yeah, she sees what I do. I am a good man. I'm making an effort. I am showing up. And she recognizes that. And I feel good. So I'm going to do even more of that. How long does my honeymoon period uh, usually last? So like about three months. After at three months, you start getting into the reality stage. Uh... What do you think about a 13 year age gap? I really don't care how big the age gap is as long as the youngest is at least 25. <gasps> My husband knew people on the Andrea Gale. Oh shit. Wow. That's that's some heavy shit. Did he? Oh. I was reading a bunch of articles about it yesterday. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, and some people were upset because the way that the people were portrayed was not quite real. Like there's some liberties that were taken with the film, obviously. Guy in online dating takes hours to reply. Is that a red flag? You need to not just be talking to one person at a time so that you're not anxious about one person. And by the way, taking hours to reply, um, that's in, that in itself is not a red flag. Um, if I'm not in the mindset to reply to you, I won't. I am the driest texter. I, seriously, my friend Sachi, when does she text me? I don't think I've replied yet. Oh, I did. But yeah, so she, she messaged me Wednesday, 1046. I messaged at 1209. Um, you know, two words. Uh, she, I messaged her... Tuesday at 1:53. She mes she meshes back on Tuesday at 6:09. Right? Don't don't be so um, stuck on time. Don't don't be like texting and then you're anxiously standing over your phone waiting for that reply. You send a reply. You get back to living. No kissing means no commitment. No commitment means you talk to multiple people simultaneously until you choose the one. Don't be so hung up on one person. You talk to multiple people, multiple people, and you see which one rises above the crowd. My dad used to work on fishing boats. I was terrified by the perfect storm. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Liberties were taken. <laughs> Definitely were taken, but what happened happened, yeah. Cool, I'm 27, awesome. Are all short-term thinkers selfish? Um, so they're listen, it's it's about single mindset and relationship mindset. There's no in-between, right? Either either you're just looking for fun or you're looking for something long term. Don't fool yourself and tell you and tell yourself there's something in between. If you're in the relationship mindset and you're fooling around, this is how you fall for friends with benefits because you are in relationship mindset. Um, so selfish short term thinkers are people who don't want to look after somebody for the long term. They're not in relationship mode. They're in non-relationship mode. They're in selfish mode. I don't want to look after somebody. I just want to look after myself. Selfish short-term thinking. You're welcome. Uh, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. 
Uh, what should I do if every time I talk to him about a problem, he laughs or changes the topic? Grab Fix That Shit. This is the book on how to resolve conflict in your relationship. It is the Relationship Conflict Fixing Book. If you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you and you do what's in this book, uh, this will help you get to a better place in your relationship. What if your partner doesn't want to go on vacation with you? You go alone. You go with friends. You go anyway. So they don't want to go. That's that's fine. I I don't I don't need my husband to want to do everything I want to do. If I want to go somewhere and he doesn't want to go, then I will find somebody else to go with. I've gone on friend trips without my husband. I've gone out to clubs. I've gone to dinner parties. I've gone to parties, to events without my husband because how I'm going to live my life is not dependent on whether or not he wants to accompany me on my life. Where can I find your books? Uh, on Amazon. Anywhere you buy books online, but Amazon for me is the best option because I get a little bit more when you buy off of Amazon. Uh, if you want an audiobook, by the way, Fix That Shit is now an audiobook. You can find it in the link to my bio. What if he only has some traits of a generous long-term thinker, but not all of them? So do you want to be with a guy? Do you want to listen? Some of them doesn't create a generous long-term thinker. If you're, if you, so here's the thing. When you put together a bed, do you want some of the pieces or all of the pieces? Don't make your partner your life. Exactly. Good, good one, my love. Uh, normal being salty if girlfriend books a cottage trip with her co-workers she met last week guys and girls I don't know um, so what's what's the problem what's the problem uh, the book you wrote for men the book I wrote for men what's it about uh, it's called the perfect play here it is guys in case you don't know um, I'm kind of a nerd I'm kind of really a nerd, and I kind of wrote uh, nine books. I wrote nine books, and does anybody want me to do a short description about what each of my books are about? Uh, so the book for men, The Perfect Play, this is the one that helps men get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. So a woman, not a girl. Anxiety and stress, maybe that's just me as a person. Is it normal for me to be feeling worried about it? That's the problem. I don't know what you're worried about, though. If you want help working through this, do book a coaching session. If you're wanting your ass to regret letting you go, does that mean you're still into them? No, it just means, uh, honestly, like, no, really no. Like... Um, I, I, there's, there's a couple exes in, in my history that, uh, I hope when in particular, honestly, that I hope comes across my platform and sees how I'm doing because, uh, he looked down on me. And so I, I want him to realize what a fucking idiot he is. It doesn't mean I want, I'm still into him at all because I'm not, I'm really not. I have so much better than him. But, um, you know, I, I think when it comes to exes, we just want them to suffer a little bit because we suffered, right? And so it's like this re residual desire for them to suffer because we did. Uh -huh. Oh, what was your apology sandwich thing? So there's the breakup sandwich. The breakup sandwich is as this is why you're great. This is why it's not working. This is why you'll be great for someone else. And then there's a three part apology. So I'm sorry for all the behaviors you know you should have done better. I realized that the emotional outcome it had on the other person. This is my plan for not doing this again. Alors 
guys, what is the song in your head today? Because me, it's that one right now. Oh, oh, should I infect you with an earworm? Should I infect you? Should I, should I just make your brain explode because this particular song hasn't bugged you in the longest time? I know you know the one I'm talking about. Uh, he must have really messed up. He sure did. Uh, chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and bologna, chicken and macaroni, chilling with my homies. I sang that song for at least one day straight. Like one day straight. I just could not get it out of my mind. Chicken wing, chicken wing. Why do I want my ex when he told me he didn't love me? I don't know, my love. I think part of us uh, always wants to pull in what walks away. And I think that's an instinctive reaction from our caveman days. Um, because woven into our DNA is is the mantra, there's strength in numbers, right? So we're so in our subconscious programming is the mantra, there's strength in numbers. I need my people, I need my tribe, there's strength in numbers. And when somebody walks away, we have a distress signal. No, 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 I need my numbers, strength in numbers. Come back here, don't go away. If you leave, I might not survive. Strength in numbers, strength in numbers. And we wanna pull them back in. We need to rise up above our biological reactions, above our emotions and go into our logical mind and go, wait a second, that's what I'm feeling, but what is the right decision for myself? Gotta go. Uh, what if he doesn't want to communicate about time span for space right now since it's fresh? What do I do? You're going to tell him. Just so we're clear, this is a breakup. This is not a break. This is not space. If you're saying I can't be with you and I don't know for how long, I'm not staying in limbo. If you can't communicate, I need space for this amount of time, and this is how much communication is going to take place during that time, but we are still together. You're not going to go somewhere. I'm not going to go somewhere. We're just going to breathe for a week. If you can't say that, we are not together. Nobody has a right to say to me, I don't want to be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. So just so we're clear, because you don't have the guts to say this, this is a break up. I'm not waiting for you. If he still talks to his exes and lied about hanging out with them, is he keeping them around as ego strokes? the ego strokes no idea is he the kind of guy who keeps ego strokes have you seen their communication? Is it flirtatious in nature? Or do you hang out with him and his friends or is it him and his friends and then him and you? If there's no mix of him and his friends and him and you, if you're not included in this mix, these are not friends. These are ego strokes. So if it's like my ex is over here and you over here and we don't all mix, his exes are not friends, they're ego strokes. My ex-fiance pushes me away when she wants me to fight to prove that I want to be with her. Why is that? Because she's insecure. Because she's insecure. 
And as you can see, being with somebody insecure only causes problems. So I don't know if you guys are still together or not, but I suggest you get fix that shit so that she can read it and understand how to be a functional member of a relationship. My ex keeps saying he cares about me and still has an obligation to me, even though I never asked. Uh, don't know why your relationship ended. Don't know what you're considering, but I suggest a coaching session if you're considering getting back with him. If not, then just block him because if this is upsetting for you to get these messages, stop letting him upset you. Their ego strokes, dump him. Do not be with the guy. This is not a man. Do not be with the guy who keeps ego strokes. You don't want that. If your partner acts differently with friends than with you, what does that mean? Ask them. Ask them. You're welcome. How should I communicate that with him? I, I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want, but I'm not going to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other girls. I'm not gonna be in a relationship with somebody who lies about hanging out with other girls. I'm not gonna be in a relationship with somebody who has female friends, but they're not part of the friend circle. Uh, guys, I am doing something in August for anybody who wants like a, you know, sort of an alignment, right, of, of their physical body, their health, their mental clarity, their manifesting powers. Um, I'm going to be doing a 12 week program in August. It's going to be five scheduled lives every week. So I'm Lucy Goosey on my lives on TikTok. When you enter this program, you know when to find me and what we're going to be doing. So two of those lives are workouts. One of them is a cooking show. One of them is a special topic with a special guest um, or a special topic with Q&A. One of them is a soul session. Uh, this is going to be manifestations, meditations, intention setting. Uh, and then I'm going to give you three coaching sessions with this package as well. So one coaching session a month. In addition to that, I'm going to be releasing some workshops. You can go into those workshops and take part in them. That's included in your package. You don't pay to go into those workshops. I've got a starting your business workshop for my custom made readers, um, marketing your business. I've got a workshop on writing, workshop on self publishing, a dating workshop, a relationship workshop, a sexy bourgeois dance workshop so you can understand how to do sexy dances for your partner. If you guys want to take part in this, there's a, a page that has a bunch of information on it. Um, if you go into the link to my bio, it says 12 week alignment program. Click on that. Add your name to the email list. I'm going to open registration on July 19th. Those first 24 hours, you're going to get 50% off. So if you sign up for this, you get all of that for 50% off. I told him we talk after two weeks and agreed. He also agreed to seek therapy with me. He feels suffocated. Okay, I would suggest the two of you come get coaching with me to work through this. You can come individually. You can come as a couple, right? So you can come for the help you need. He can come for the help he needs. The two of you can come together um, as a couple to, to get even you know deeper into these discussions and communicating with each other. If you have to make a pros and cons list to stay together, is that a red flag that you shouldn't be together? No, it just means you need to do some journaling in order to figure out your thoughts. That's all. Sometimes like our thoughts, like if you, if you think of your thoughts as like each individual thought as a sentence written out and every single sentence is a spaghetti strand 
and in your head you have this bowl of spaghetti strands and it's all mixed in together and you can't tell where one thought starts and the other one ends because they're all mixed in together and and you're trying to make sense of things but they're not making sense you need to start writing get those spaghetti strands out one by one by one so you can read each one and it starts making sense is there a psychology behind dating def uh, cheating definitely um, people cheat either because they're selfish or insecure or they cheat because they're trying to numb something so some people will choose drugs or alcohol or people to do their numbing uh, tell us again how to get on that list for these seminar classes so for that 12 week alignment program uh, go to my bio click on the link tree and click the 12 week alignment program it's going to take you to a page with a bunch of information on it when you sign up for the mailing list you're going to get more information fed to you by the way um, so if you're interested in this uh, then then sign yourself up for that 50 percent discount you're welcome, love. Is what a pyramid scheme? A pyramid scheme is when, is, isn't a pyramid scheme like, I'm gonna make money off other people who are making money for the company, right? That's a pyramid scheme. Like the people on the bottom are, are getting people to buy stuff and that money's being funneled up to the people at the top. Did you know that that's what a pyramid scheme is? Google pyramid scheme. Google is free. Google is free. Right. Guys, don't forget to go follow me on Instagram. Go take part in that uh, giveaway so you might win a free one hour coaching session. So the coaching sessions depend on uh, what you choose. If you're interested in coaching to gain some clarity, should I stay, should I go? How can I make my relationship better? How should I deal with this situation? Um, love your glasses. The link to these are in the link to my bio. They're the blue blocking glasses, the ones that uh, keep your eyes from getting too affected by screens. Um, so, oh, what was I saying? Oh, for coaching. Um, go to my bio, click on the link tree, and click the get a coaching session button. It's going to take you to, to a page. Make sure you read what's on that page. Um, and if you want to book yourself in for a session, then just follow the three steps to do that. glasses love you I don't know what that question is the back of dating 101 what is it all about Barry in England UK the at the back of you dating 101 what how do you suggest to your friends that her partner may not be a generous long-term thinker or just stay out of it uh behind you but what oh what is dating 101 about oh okay 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 maybe i get it and maybe i get it um hello Oh, hello, say yes. Uh, say yes to the chemistry. Da, 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 da. Biochemistry student. Love it. Um, I'm demoderating you. Just because I need more moderator space. <laughs> You're not regular enough for me to keep you as a moderator. So I'm, I'm gonna demoderate you because I've had some situations where I, I've had people like, make me a moderator. Um, 
because I didn't have enough moderators at the time. Uh, right. How do you suggest your, your friend that her partner may not be a generous long-term thinker? I would grab a copy of No More Assholes and gift that to her and say, hey, take a look at those 12 character traits. Isn't that fascinating? How do you know if you love them truly or if you just love the, fam the familiarity of them? Um, that's fine. No crying. Um, well, I mean, no, you're allowed to cry. If really it does make you sad, then absolutely do have your emotions. Um, so I love the familiarity of my husband. Like we seek what's familiar. Familiarity is wonderful. Love should be calm. Love should not be a roller coaster. Love should be steady. So yes, I love the familiarity of my husband. I love the steadiness. I love the calmness that we've created. Uh, does lack of trust ultimately mean the relationship won't work? It means there's going to be lots of vomiting and fighting and negative emotions. You really need to be in a relationship with a trustworthy partner. So Dating 101, this book here, Understanding the Drives, Behaviors, and Emotions Behind Love. Uh, this is a textbook. I did write that for... Um, so here's the thing. I was doing book signings. I was shoving no more assholes in in parents with teenage girls. I'm like, I was shoving no more assholes in, in parents with teenage girls. I'm like, oh, she needs to read this. And I like, and then they look at the title, no more assholes, like, fuck, she's 16. Like she doesn't need this. And I felt bad shoving that, that book in their hands. And I was like, you know what? Like these teenagers need their own book. So I wrote dating 101. It's from me to anybody. So you know, like the perfect play is from me to men. No more assholes is from me to women, right? Fix that shit, that's from me to women. But Dating 101 is me to the reader, whoever they are, um, and simply teaching them, educating them about the drives, behaviors, and emotions that we define as love. Maybe familiarity wasn't the right word. I meant more the convenience. Okay, so that's different, right? You're 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 using them, right? If you're with them because it's convenient, then you're using them. So that's the question you need to ask yourself. Am I with them because I'm using them or am I with them because I love them? And love is a verb. Love is what you want to do for your partner to make them happy. Can my boyfriend read Fix That Shit with me or should I wait to get him the men's version? He can read your version with you because he'll understand you better. Because this, you know, me having a conversation with you like I do in Fix That Shit, they're a fly on the wall going, really, you think that way? Really, you feel that way? So it is enlightening for men as well to read our version of the book. I argue a lot with my boyfriend, even though it's something we agree on, but our verbiage is what gets us. So what you want to do is you want to get fix that shit. Um, what's happening is there's like, there's like fire meeting fire here and you guys are getting like whooshed. Um, and you don't want that. You want to like, if there's a miscommunication, you want to be able to just like, oh, okay. And just be able to calmly address that. It doesn't need to turn into an argument. So I really do suggest you get into fix that shit. It's going to help you understand how to communicate better. It's going to also help you understand how men think. So that will also improve your communication because we have different brains, right? Like when you look at our, yes, I'm wearing Gemma bottoms. Uh, when we, when you look at our outside, like if you stand me beside a man, do we look different? Yeah, there's there's some physiological differences, right? So there's also physiological differences in the brain structure. Men are not like us. Mentally, physiologically, chemically, we are not the same. Testosterone, estrogen, not the same. Like hair here and there, not the same. Bone structure, not the same. Brain structure, not the same. So when we take how we are and we are upset that men aren't how we are, this is a way that we are getting in our own way when it comes to relationship. We have undue frustration. We have unnecessary frustration because we're simply not understanding our differences. So if you grab fix that shit, you're going to have a better understanding of the differences and you're going to fight less. Guys, I have a coaching session starting in 10 minutes. Uh, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do.
Oh, honey. Hello, Poskicheri. Thank you for the rose. Okay. Those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture here once or twice. You're going to get a pop up, and the pop up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you've done that, say, I just did. In the meantime, I'm going to tell you how you can get some freebies. So go into the link to my bio. There is a meditation starter page. It has a free meditation guide for you to download. There is a free book, Fake Love Need Not Apply, that you can uh, download as well. There's also a free long distance relationship guide. Um, I'm going to give you guys a quick walk through my books. Come, you can get my books on Amazon, anywhere you buy books online. If you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is now an audiobook, but you can only get it through the link in my bio. So Come Back Queen is going to help you get over a breakup. No More Assholes is going to help you choose your next relationship. After the First Kiss is going to help you solidify that relationship by not going into an insecurity phase when it switches from honeymoon to reality phase. Talk about baby mamas, talk about kids, talk about work, talk about friends, hobbies, pets. All the stuff that is going to take up time um, and make things change in your relationship. Fix That Shit is going to help you get to zero fighting with your partner. Custom made combined with Fix That Shit really helps you stop being codependent in your relationship. Dating 101, Understanding the Drives, Behaviors, and Emotions Behind Love. This is a textbook. Um, how do I learn to communicate with a man or brighter future together? Fix That Shit is going to give you the communication tools you need to talk about sticky things without there being defensiveness. Fake Love Need Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Tools You Need to Talk About Sticky Things Without There Being Defensiveness. Fake Love Need Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. This is the free book. When you hit that free book button, you will get this in ebook. Uh, Say Yes to Goodness, 10 Steps to Complete and Happy You. This is the book that helps you understand how to be happy not only inside your relationship, but outside of your relationship as well. Men, this is your book. It's the perfect play. This is the book that's going to teach you how to get over your last relationship and find your next one. I got to go, my loves. Got to go to my coaching session. I love you. I will be back soon. I never stay away for long because I love you too much. Mwah. Gonna go. I'm going to go help somebody be happy now. I'll see you soon, my loves.